Or if you want to be a wrestler, you're going to have to practice. You're going, if you want to go in the military, you got to go, you got to practice. You got to get in shape to be able to do it. And I'll tell you what, the Lord's going to come soon. And people's not going to be ready. But tonight, thank God, we, we're here trying to get ready. We're getting ready. Amen. I know Sister Rainy, she bakes. She probably gets ready to fix them pies. She puts that flour out. She knows how to do it. She can tell somebody else how to do it. Probably my pie wouldn't be very, very much. But if I can like, sure learn from her. And the thing about it is we ought to be ready to learn. We ought to want to learn. Do everything we can. And if you know, when you first get in church, you never want to miss church. You want to be involved in everything that's going on. But after you get complacent, after a while, with the world and the things that you're doing in your life, what's going on in your life, you begin to put God on the back burner, and it ain't very long until you're back out in the world doing the things that you used to do. What's bad is people come to church and still doing them things. They've left the, the right things, and they've went out and doing other things, and they still say they're all right. But in this verse tonight, I'd like to talk about assembly. Hebrews 10, and I'm going to start 23. I'm going to read down to. I'm going to read down through 26. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Without what? You know what wavering is? Finding a way around it. Not stopping. Doing what? Not stopping. Like continuing. Yeah. No. Just, you know what? You, you got to be consistent with something. Brother Chris, you got a new job. You got to be consistent with your job. You need to learn how to do it in a consistent way. No matter what, you're still going to live for the Lord, ain't you? You're going to get to church if you're late. Amen. You got to have that consistency and you got to have it. See, that's God's command. We can't waver nothing. You know, we, we want to find an easy way. The devil to give us a way. If, you, if we want an easy way, he'll show us an easy way. But he goes on, he's without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. God promised. He's faithful. You know what faithful is? Never miss. Never given up. Continue. The Bible said we're called, chosen, and what? Faithful. Amen. And, and let us consider one another to provoke and to love and to good works. God wants us to provoke one another and to love and to good works. Not to argue, not to fight, not to backbite. Just like this, this thing over the, the president and, and all this stuff over the, uh, the things that's been going on. There's a lot of things that's went on that I, have, that I don't agree with. But I'm, it don't do me no good to get on Facebook or on there and start slandering That's people right. and putting them down Amen. because I'm not a man of God. I can't do that. Right. Amen. What kind of light would I be Amen. to you if I did that stuff? Right. That's why I don't do it here in church. I know I see a lot of things that goes on and I don't, I don't go along with. Amen. People say, well, you're afraid to stand up. No, I'm not afraid to stand up. But the Bible tells us not to speak evil of no man. And, I, and, and, and that means to everybody. You can't go around putting people down and having that kind of spirit. Because if you get to talking that way, you're, that old spirit, it'll get a hold of you. Mm -hmm. and, and other people, they'll see, hear you do that. And you know what? You can stir other people. You can stir the devil up in other people by the words you say. That's why the Bible says to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. We're God's people. We're supposed to be peaceful people. I mean, say Amen. amen. Verse 25, not forsaking if you want to. So what it says? No. Not forsaken, maybe. No. Now it says not forsaking. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Don't, for, don't forsake it. Be faithful to it. Okay? As the manner of some is. We know that that's the manner of some. That's the way people are. Yeah. But exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. In other words, when people see you meet. You know, it, it ain't going to do no, no good for my kids to come over and visit me on Sunday or Wednesday night or Sunday night. Because they know I'm a church. 
unless I'm sick. And that's, that's what I'm saying. We gotta, we gotta have a light. We gotta show people that well, there's a fear about us. I'm, I'm afraid to stay home. When there's something going on, I'm, I'm afraid that I'm not gonna be a part of it. Because I'll tell you what, God has set this assembly in motion. I inherited this assembly, thank God, when I come to the Lord. I didn't really know what God had for me to do, but I guess down deep inside, but I had to wait for that time to come. And you know, I want to tell you something. I love every one of you. I don't love one more than the other. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't take nothing from the church. I don't charge the church. And I'll tell you what, but I do do my job at the church. I try my best to feed you and, and give you something to think about and encourage you. You know, I, I do all these things, and I, I don't charge you to do it. But the thing about me is, you need to come to church and hear what I got to say. If God has put me in this position, and He gives me things to think about and things to say, and I sit and work and study to, so I can bring it to the church, when half the church is not here, that's forsaking the assembly. God's got a work to do. He's got something going on. He's wanting the ministry to go forward. He's wanting to see people come in. He's wanting to see people work together. He wants to see people at the altar seeking the Holy Ghost. I don't get up here and say, raise your hands, come right up around the altar. I don't just do that just to be heard, thank God. God, I'm dealing with my heart. I'm trying to get people to work together. When you got young people coming in, they're going to follow the older people. But if you're just sitting on your seat and you're not doing nothing, you're not being a help, thank God, it, it's going to discourage them. It's going to make them just like that old saying, there's a song said, if everybody in my church was just like me, what kind of church would my church be? In other words, are, are you faithful to the church? Do you support the church? You know, you worry about supporting me. I just like I said, just be here. Amen. Just be here. Be at the house of God. And I'm not saying for nobody out, but I'm going to show you something here with the help of the Lord. He said, not forsaking the sin of ourselves together. God wants his people to come together. You know I mean, believe that. Right? Everywhere in the Bible, and we're going to touch a few places here, and God wants his people to come together. He never did call a fella and him go out by himself. He called everybody together. Yeah. And he still wants everybody together. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, people that work against the assembly of the church, they'll go out and start something else, doing something else, then they're, they're dissembling. Yeah. They're, they're driving away what's supposed to be. Thank God. i tell you what, today, people, they go here a while, they go there a while, whatever. But the thing about it is, you better stay Stay where God puts you. Thank God. If God put that man in that place, you better stay there and you better support him and you help him. Thank God. And if God didn't put me here, thank God he'll move me out. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I'd like everybody to go with me to Numbers chapter 10. like to show you how important this is. Numbers chapter 10. When you hear some of my blood talk about blood and the trumpet, what do you think about? Make the noise. Sound the warning. Who usually blows on that trumpet? The minister. Priest. When we're when we're expanding the word of God, we're blowing a trumpet. All right. Numbers chapter 10, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver. Of a whole piece shalt thou make them, and thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly journey of the camps. You know, God has got a, a voice in the church. You ever listen to scriptures and listen to what the Spirit saith unto the church? There were seven churches there he was talking to, but he wasn't, he wasn't just talking to the whole world. There's a lot of spirits and a lot of voices people hear, but it's not God the one that's sending them voices. Amen. Just like I said, uh, today you got so much stuff going on, voices going everywhere, everybody, but I'll tell you what, you better be careful what you follow. Listen what he said. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall what? Assemble. Assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. In other words, God was using these trumpets to give to the people, the priests, so that when they blow them trumpets, 
the people would assemble at the door of the tabernacle. Don't you believe that the trumpet sounded here on Wednesday night? Amen. How many believe the trumpet sounded here on Sunday night? Amen. You know, people come out to hear the sound of the trumpet. Amen. They hear, want to hear the word of the Lord. And that's just what I'm saying. But everybody ain't got the trumpet. There was only two trumpets. I thought about all them million people, thank God, and all the priests, but God only gave them two trumpets. He'd only chosen two people to blow on them trumpets, thank God, at one time or another. I'm not saying there's two people, but I'm just saying God had an order. He had a way to do things. i tell you what, if, if you want to know something, and I'll tell you what, I'm not, I'm not smart and I don't know it all, but if you want to know something, and I'm going to tell you, you try this. If you're something that you want to know and it's trouble, you don't go ask nobody else about it. You don't even need to come and ask me. But if you sit in the house of God, you'll get your answer. Amen. It might not come from me. It might come from one of the other brothers. But God will send an answer. God has showed me things. But when I, when I hush and I listen for God to talk to me and listen to Him to talk to me, there's times that when I had the hardest time coming to the house of God, that would be the very night that God would send a message and it would just open the door for me. Yeah. The hardest time when, I, when I'd be sick or when, the when I was troubled. And a lot of times when I, something happened I didn't make it, that very night would be something that I missed that I needed. There's times when I knew, thank God, and I, Bob, we're close to it. I know some of your lives. Thank God, and I tried to to, uh, to speak the word of the Lord. I try to speak to everybody. I just don't try to come in and try to find something for Brother Johnny tonight. But I hope I have something for Brother Johnny. I hope I have something for everybody because I believe that that's the way the Lord works. That's the way He does. Thank God. Uh, he's done me that way many times. Thank God. I thought about uh, Brother Johnny, his message there that he was teaching Sunday night. Thank God. I listened. I've been reading about that chapter, four chapter of Hosea. And another brother I know that he was in another, another state. He was preaching. He was preaching on that chapter. And then somewhere else, somebody else was preaching on that chapter. And then I was in it too. That's just what I'm saying. When God's got something he wants to do, it'll, it'll come multiple times. I've seen things right here in the church when some, when I was working and somebody would teach Sunday school, I would come that night and preach on the very same thing. Some of you brothers, no doubt, is when I've got up and spoke, you've had the same scriptures wrote down, God dealing with you. God is speaking to the church, but you got to sit around and listen. Ain't God, people's looking for some big thing to happen, but God's way is a simple way. If you'll just sit and wait on Him, you try what I said. You've got some trouble in you, you ask the Lord about it, see if you don't get your answer, right? Here, out of the book. All right. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if they blow but with one trumpet, then the princes, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. Amen. In other words, when you just hear one trumpet, that ain't for everybody, but that's for the elders, that's for the heads. Verse 5 said, When you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east part shall go forward. You know what? They didn't go without the sounding of the trumpet. They moved. God gave them a trumpet. They blew the trumpet. And they got up and they moved with the trumpet. They stopped with the trumpet. And that's just what I'm saying. If we do everything by the word of God, it's we're going to be in the, going in the right way. I mean, say amen. Amen. Verse 6 says, When you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound an alarm. And then he goes on talking about Aaron. He said, The sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be with you in your ordinances or forever throughout your generations. And if ye go to war in the land against your enemy that oppress you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. In other words, it goes on with the sound, with the sacrifices and everything. The trumpet, the word of God, is being sounded, thank God. And I'll tell you what, everybody worked together. Just like when the walls of Jericho, when the Lord told Joshua told them to march around the walls, they wasn't half of them stayed back at the camp. 
They all went, thank God. And when they did, God knew. That's just what I'm saying. When you think about people coming together, do you ever think about, I'll I tell you what. I got, I got a definition here I'd like to read to you. That's as far as I'm going there in that. But I got a definition here I'd like to read. And we're talking about a symbol, okay? How many knows what a symbol means? Gather together. Do you know what this symbol means? Separate. Separate. This symbol means to come apart, to disperse, to scatter. If people work against the church and they don't assemble, what are they doing? They're dissembling. They're not. They're not assembling. They're dissembling. It's just. A, it's. It's important. Thank God we stick together. You know, it's just like this. I know one of these days, if the Lord tarries, I'm not going to be here. I know that's going to happen. And I, there, I, I don't know who's going to be the pastor. But God's going to set somebody in here. It's not going to be just some guy you're going to go out and hunt. But it'll be set in by him. God will raise somebody up right here in this church to take this church. I mean, that's what he did in the Bible. He always raised somebody up. You don't have to call Washington to get somebody to come here and take over the church. But it'll be somebody that God will set in here. And, and, and it'll work together. But the thing about this, be careful. Make sure. You know, today God didn't let us choose. He chose. How many believe that? Amen. I just, like I've said many times, I didn't want this job. I was just fine preaching and helping everybody else. I come here for a lot of years. Help Brother Doug and Brother Bill and Brother Taylor. I help, I just helped them and I was tickled to do that. I didn't want this job, but when it came to me that I had to step in and take this position, then I've had to take it. And I need you to help me. I need you to help me. How many wants me to feed the flock? Amen. All right, then you pray for me that I can feed the flock. Pray for me that I'll make the decisions, the right decision for the church. And if I make a uh, decision that's questionable to you, then pray for me. Don't put me down right. because God's able to change things and make things work. And I, I was just like, yes, we, just like I said, God's going to raise somebody up to take my place. Amen. That's going to take care of the church. That's going to love the church. If we all stick together and we hold on. But if everybody's going out trying to hunt something else, then you're, you're never going to have unity. Right. There's never going to be unity. But when people come together, there's going to be unity in the church. Mm -hmm. All right. Go with me tonight. To 1 Kings chapter 8. And I'm just going to read one verse here. I don't want to keep you too real long tonight. I mean, if, if you're faithful to the house of God, do you think your children will be faithful? What if you're not faithful? Teach they them not to be. They won't be. I know people right now. I know people that years back they were there, the people they wouldn't come to church. They'd stay home. They could come to church once every three months, and they could shout hallelujahs and, and have a time. And then you, the next morning, Sunday school would be, and they wouldn't even be there. They might not be there the next church time. You might not see them for a month. But they still, when they come to church, they got it. I'm questioning that kind of stuff. Right. I'm questioning because I know what i got to do to stay in my That's position right. with the church. Right. And if I God requires it of me, He requires it of you. I'm not right. asking nothing of nobody that I don't, that I don't ask to my own self. Right. I, any, there's not any job in the church that I wouldn't be willing to do. I wouldn't ask you to do something that I wouldn't do. I'd right. clean out the toilets. I'd dig ditches. I could preach whatever God wanted me to do. That's that's what I'm trying to say. What would you do to keep the ministry going? I mean, there's more to keeping the ministry going than just showing up in church a couple times a week too. There's a black to select. There's a there's a telephone ministry now, not a gossip ministry, but you can call people on the phone. You can pray for people. Thank God. And I know we've been living here with visiting people because of this COVID. But you know what? You can still talk to people. You can still call people. You can still witness to, to the Lord, thank God. Let people know, hey, there's church tonight. You want to come go with me? Amen. All right. 
Now this was a King Solomon when he was bringing the house of the Lord together. And, and I'm just going to read one verse. He said, for verse one, he said, then Solomon, what did he do? Sim, sim. He assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes and the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel and to King Solomon in Jerusalem. And they might bring up the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of the city of David, which is in Zion. When they built the house of the Lord, they assembled everybody to bring the ark up. Now, you know what? Everybody didn't carry that ark, no. did they? No. But you know what? They, everybody was required to be there. All the elders were required to be there. Amen. The priest was the only one that could blow on the trumpet. But you know what? They had to blow the trumpet to somebody. God's called me to preach the gospel, but I can't preach the gospel if I don't have nobody to preach to. That's right. Amen? That's right. All right, go with me to, uh, we talked about Solomon. Let's talk about David. Let's go to First Chronicles, chapter 28. While well, you're going there, brother, it's like a hospital. You know, the people, before they go to the hospital, they have to study. They have to get an education like you just talked about. Then they have to be put in the position. And you go in a surgery room, you've got doctors, you've got nurses, you've got technicians, you've got anesthesiologists. Well, in the church, you've got pastors, teachers, um, evangelists, apostles. You've got the five office ministry. You know, they've got to work together. And then the people, if they want to be, um, that was given for the perfecting of the saints. If they want to be perfected, we have to come and sit under the ministry so we can be, so we can grow stronger and get better. But, you know, it takes the ministry working together and it takes people coming and being submission under the ministry to get better. The scripture says, obey them that have the rule over you. Who has a rule over you? Ministry. If I'm your pastor, I That's right. Yeah. But I'm like Brother Jenkins. I said, if you if you go out of here and live contrary and do whatever you want to do, don't go tell people I'm your pastor. Amen. I'm that's right. I'm just I mean that's that's making people say that's a hard way to be. No, that's what I was taught. Amen. Yeah. I've been brought up on the carpet before. I've done things when I was young that I wasn't supposed to do. I sure got brought up on the carpet. Probably some of you sitting there grinning. You know I have. Because when Brother Taylor puts you up on the carpet, you know you've been on the carpet. Because Jesus, he did it in front of everybody. You know why he did it? Because he loved me. Me and Brother Bill Hankins, we would sit out here many nights and go round and round about some things that we didn't agree on. Different ones. But you know what? I love him. Even though they disagree. Brother Chris, if me and you disagree, I still love you. Amen. But I still got a job to do. Amen. And I, that's just what I'm saying. God will work in the church if you if you let it. Amen. All right. I'm just going to read one verse here. Now, this is when David was calling things together. And David assembled all the princes of Israel. Some of them. All of them. The princes of the tribes and the captains of the companies that ministered to the king by course and the captains over the thousands and the captains over hundreds and the stewards over all the substance and possession of the king and his sons with the officers and with the mighty men and with all the valiant men under, were to, under Jerusalem. That God had set up a work for them to do. He wanted them to assemble there. And, the thing, and that's just what I'm saying. Can't you see all the things that tries to bring this symbol in the church? You think of all the preachers that have quit standing on the truth. Amen. And they make it easy for people. Mm -hmm. And they lure people in by their easy ways. That's right. And when people all go there, they're dissembling the church. That's right. They are. You got some. If God's got got somebody preaching the truth, and people want to stay, and they go here and go there, and they're they're dissembling. Thank right. God. And the preachers that's doing it, they're dissembling too. That's right. That's right. That's cool. I believe in evangelists. I, I believe that they, they're called. There's a work in the in the church for them. That I don't use that many evangelists. Because a lot, a lot of them that I've saw in the past, usually what they do, they come in to tear the church out. That's right. If I not note, I've saw them come into the church, and they'll, they'll do good, and people love them, 
and they'll go down the road and start something else. Yeah. Have to, a lot of the young people usually, they'll usually go out. I've seen it happen down in Portsmouth. I've seen the older fellow have a church for years and years down there, and a young evangelist come in, and he started preaching there and helping him. Next thing you know, he, uh, without even preaching up, I mean, he went right down the road, not very far from there, and started up another church, and half of the people that went down there. And that's just what I'm saying. That ain't. That's not a sin. One. That's a disassembly. That's right. God ain't in it. All right. Y'all love me. Ain't nobody mad at me. Nope. All right. How about let's go to Ezra chapter nine. Y'all remember Ezra? Let's see what Ezra did here. I'm just going to read one verse. Chapter nine, verse four. How many fears the Lord? And when something's wrong, you, we need to be at the house of the Lord. Sharanda, I don't think you're at the house of the Lord because you need something. And you're saying you need it. Amen. I, and I thank God for that. I've been praying for you. I'm praying that God works in your life. But you're going to find what you need at the house of the Lord and among God's people. That's where it's at. Amen. And I don't care what, what the doctors say and what everybody says. I'm going to tell you what this says. I mean, say amen. amen. All right, Ezra 9 and 4. Listen. Then they were assembled unto me, every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel. Who assembled to you? The ones that trembled, right? The ones that was I feared God. I'm going to read it again. Then were assembled unto me, every one that trembled at the words of the God of Israel. Because of the transgression of those had been carried away, and I said astonished until the evening sacrifice. In other words, there was a people that when they became troubled, and they saw they was in trouble with God, they assembled themselves together. How many think the world's in trouble tonight? Mm -hmm. How many think all the trouble's going on in the world? We need to be in the house of the Lord. We need to be praying together. We need to be seeking God together. Amen. It's not time to sit home and feel sorry for ourselves. Amen. I'll tell you what. They're not going to help you, children. Right. It's going to take God. Are you seeking God? He'll help you. No matter where you're at, where you work at, what kind of job you got, whether you're in school. I'll tell you what. God, if God be for us, He can be against us. Right. All right. Ezra, let's talk about Nehemiah. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 1. And I'm not just telling you something that I think I hits right out of the book here. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 9 That's the reason a lot of times a church can't do nothing. Can't have revivals because people won't come to church. Yeah. You'd have revivals and there'll be more sinners here than they are Christians. Yeah. Amen, that's true. That's just like I said, people can come one night and shout like a house far and then you don't see them for a month or two. I'll tell you what, something's wrong. They need to get at the altar and pray until they pray through. Right. All right. Nehemiah 9 and 1. Now on the 20th and the fourth day of the month, the children of Israel were what? Assembled, Assembled with what? Fast. And with fasting and with sackcloth and herbs upon them. I tell you what, they assembled together. You want God to work? We got to assemble together. Just like we've had, we need to do it some more here soon. We need to call some fast and people fast together. Amen. We need to fast and pray together and seek the Lord. Amen. You know what? I, I used to, years back, I, I know one individual, and I'm, just not, and I'm not judging that person, but I know, thank God, that we're having an all day fast service, and I know this person went to Camden Park that day. And I thought, how could people go to Camden Park? I said, what do they think? What? When their family says, you, the ch church is assembling and fasting and praying for the lost, and you're up at Camden Park. And I thought, what kind of mind? Amen. Well, what have you been thinking about? Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, if you if you neglect to do the things of God long enough, you will neglect what you're supposed to do. Right. All right. Okay. Isaiah chapter 11. Let's talk about the Lord. Let's see what he says. Isaiah 11 and 12. I just got a few here. I'll try not to keep it all long when I get up here. But I want to assemble. So much more as I see the day approaching. I know the day is approaching. I want to be ready. Why would you 
what would you do if, if the Lord was to come and you was out doing something if you was over at Walmart? Right. That's right. <clears throat> Amen. Or what if you was at the golf course or, or mm -hmm. wherever it's at? Think about it. I know people get it in their mind, well, they won't miss me. I'll tell you what, I miss everybody that's not here. That's right. Amen. Amen. If, you, if God brings you in here and, and he, he tells me you, you feed them, you help them, you encourage them, right. help them to grow, give them something to read, so encourage them with something. That's what my job is. I'm not the big boss. I'm, I'm just a servant. Right. You go to a restaurant, you got the servant waits on tables. That's what I do. I come here and I hope that when you leave, Sister Rini, I hope you get served. What you're, I want you to have good service. And if you want to tempt me, you come back to church next week. Next week. Amen? Amen. All right, Isaiah 11, 12. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall what? Assemble, Assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. I see the Lord working, bringing people into the church. I see sinners coming in and they say it. I, but you know what? All I can do is preach what the Lord gives me. Right. Amen. I'm right. hoping and praying that God will change him. But you know what? The Lord said he's going to gather the outcasts of Judah and Israel, those, the backsliders, it's people that, that's turned away from God. I like to see every one of them come back to the house of the Lord. But you're going to have to come back the way the Lord said. That's right. right. All right. Go with me in the book of Job. Chapter 2, verse 16. Just going to read one verse. You can read this whole chapter. I know we talked about having a fast meeting and, and gathering ourselves together. But you know, really, when he was talking here, he was talking about, hey, you see how bad it is. We need to start. We need to gather together. We need to start praying and fasting and seeking the Lord. Not just for one day, but maybe for several days. All right, Job 2 and 16. By with me? Gather the people. Ain't that what God wants me to do? Ain't that what He wants you to do? Yeah. You ever read that scripture? He said, Go out in the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Mm -hmm. But you ain't going to compel people if you say, Well, I'll tell you what, I preach are so boring tonight, all I can do is keep my eyes open. Well, that might be true. I've been sleepy when I've come to church before. But it ain't because I'm of the devil. I was tired, Brother Chris. But you know what? I can get up and check myself a little bit and, and get myself woke up. I've, I've woke some of them up snoring. I'm pretty loud, me and Brother Johnny. We don't we don't let me too many sleep. We run down the hallway. Hey, Amen. Real quick, we get them up and get them going. I've done that before. I mean, nice enough, but ain't that right, Brother? Shake their hand. You know what? It's not because they're bad, but they assemble together. And I'm not going to tell you that every time I get on the floor, it's going to be the best message you ever heard. I'm hoping it is every time I get up. But you know what? There's many a times I mourn over the things I speak more than the things that I that I rejoice over because I worry whether I've hurt you or I've bruised you or I've afflicted you because I, God knows I wouldn't want to do nothing to hurt none of you. I want you to grow in this thing. I, I want, when I'm gone, I want the same thing that was handed down to me that, that I'll be able to hand it to somebody else. Yeah. The same teaching. The same, we, we're teaching the same teachings. Yeah. You got people that's went other places, but look what they're following. Right. Look what they're following. Yeah. Gather the people. Look out now. Sanctify the congregation. People don't want to hear that sanctification enough. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and those that suck the breast. And let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and let the bride out of her closet. How many wants to just really have a meeting with God? That's what God wants us to do. He goes on here and tells us that we can, we can sanctify a fast and call us all an assembly. And let the priest weep between the porch and the altar and say, God, save our people. We need to have this kind of life. That's what we need to be doing at the church. All right, let's try another. How about Acts chapter 1? And I'm not telling you anything tonight that the Lord 
doesn't tell you. I'm reading it right out of the book. Assemble your... You know what? We get up all the time and preach about not forsaking the assembly. Come to church. I'm not saying that to bridge you or hurt you, but we're doing that for your own good. When I was a senior in high school, I was three months from graduating. I was getting ready to quit school. I've been in so much trouble. And they, and they finally got me in there and said, listen, hey, if you don't wake up here and pay attention, you're not going to graduate. You're, going to, you're not going to have a diploma. You spent 12 years of school and you ain't going to get nothing out of it. And you know what? I, I, I kind of said, well, yeah, I'll straighten up here for three months. But I could have not had a diploma. Anything you have, if it's not worth working for, it's not worth having. That's right. You know, if you support the church, you'll be more apt to want to have something to do with it. If you're putting your money in something, you'll want to go find out what's going on. And I'm not preaching on money because I know some have to give, some don't. But I'm just saying, whatever God tells you in His Word, if you do it, He's going to bless you for doing it. All right. Verse 4. And being what? Assembled together with them, commanded. You know, the Lord was with them. He was together. He was assembled together with them. Together with them and commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he saith, ye have heard of me. Ain't that what he told him? Go down to Jerusalem and wait. Mm -hmm. Assemble together and wait, wait, wait. God's want us to assemble together. Amen. When God's getting ready to move, He's going to move with the church. I want to be there with the church. All right. Go with me to Acts chapter 4. Thirty-one. Acts four and thirty-one. I mean, huh? Acts four and thirty-one. You know, if we want, well, you know what? What's really bad is when you you feel bad or something's going on, you don't make it to church, and then everybody calls you and says. Man, we really had a service last night. Boy, I tell you, people shouting that God was moving, and you just feel about that big. Boy, maybe I could have just made a little better of an effort, and God would have touched me. Sister Martha, well, some of you know her, and some of you know she's been she's been gone for a long time, but she seeked the Holy Ghost for a long time, brother Chris. She'd, be in, she'd ride back when you'd pick her up and bring her back forth to church. And, and, and I'd tell her, she'd, she'd always say, Brother Glenn, I'll try and try. I can get it. She'd come up here one night, she'd pray for it, and then she wouldn't pray for it for a while. And she, when I talked to her about it, I was always trying to encourage her. I'd say, Sis, you got to get up there and pray. you got to get up there and seek the Lord. I said, God will feel you. He's promised to you. And she, and she, oh, she wouldn't. She's all full of doubt all the time. She said, I've tried and tried, and I can't get it. And I just keep encouraging her. She came to church one night, and I think Sherry was getting anointed. And she said she just felt like going up and putting her hand on Sherry and praying for her. And when she went up and put her hand on Sherry, the Lord filled her with the Holy Ghost. She started Amen. speaking in tongues. I can still remember going home. She said, I got it, Brother Lynn. I got it. I got it. You told me I was going to get it, and I got it. And I said, yeah, you got it. Amen. And you know what? She just had to just keep waiting upon God. And I seen her get down sick and, and she almost didn't have a mind. I mean, I'm talking about sick wise. And we went out and prayed with her. But you know what? When we was praying, the Holy Ghost moved up on her and helped her to regain her consciousness again. Amen. She still, she didn't live long after that. And I know, I know a lady that when I went to her house and, and I'm not saying anything. God, God done this. But this, this lady, they, she didn't know her kids or nothing. And I went out to the house to visit her, and it ain't anything that I've done. When I, was, when I went in there and I started pr praying with her, I prayed for her at the hospital, and I remembered, I said, God, please don't let her lose her mind. I said, if you take her and help her to keep her mind or sound mind, she's lived for you all these years. And I'll tell you what, and I, I prayed at the hospital, and, she would, and when I left, she was still like that. 
But I think it was later that afternoon or the next day, I went to her house, I opened up the front door, and I went through and I started singing a song. And before I got back to her bed, she was a singing with me. Thank God, God, and give her remembrance back again. And you know, that's what I'm saying. We got to we gotta step out on faith tonight and believe God. We got to assemble ourselves together. All right. Verse 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled. What? They was what? Yes. The place where what? They were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God to both. They got a double portion there. Amen. Amen. They already had the Holy Ghost. But they once said, God grant to thy servants so that we can have power over all these things that's going on. God grant them boldness. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. That's the kind of service I want to be in. But we got to be assembled together. Why do you think God said we're two or three are gathered together in my name? He just didn't say when you gather my name over on the hill and, and you go on a 40 day fast. He said when you gather, when there's two or three gathered together in my name. And we believe the same thing and we agree God's going to work. Alright. One more. Two more. Acts 11 and 26. I've kept you a little longer tonight. But I kind of feel a little religious tonight. Is that all right? 11 and 26. And when he had found him, they was looking, he went to look for Paul. Barnabas went to look for Paul. And when he had found him, he brought him, to, brought him to Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year, what they do? Assembled. They assembled themselves with who? The with the church and taught much people. That was the purpose of getting assembled together. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. You know why they gathered? They assembled themselves together. They come to hear the word of God. They was anxious. That's what I'm saying. God's why God wants us to assemble together. All right. Acts 15, 25. In this 15th chapter, this is when all the elders came together to consider matters in the church, make decisions about what was going on. Verse 25 said, And it seemed good unto us, being what? Assembled. Assembled with what? One accord. Gathered together in one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. In other words, when they assembled together, they made decisions. They made ministerial decisions, Brother Chris. They kind of decided they was going to send somebody to do a work. If we can't get people to come to church, we can't, we can't do nothing together. If we have a dinner and you don't even know if you're going to have enough food to feed people, you don't know if people's going to come. I, I ask people, say, well, I, 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 don't, I don't go with them things. Well, if the church is doing things, don't you think we ought to do it together? Amen? Amen. That's just what I'm saying. Why well, can we do things? I can't do nothing by myself. I couldn't pay the bills for this church. And you know something else, whether you realize it or not, Every time, and I, this is just an estimate, our electric bill was seven hundred some dollars last month. And that's one that you use in the building twice a week. That's almost a hundred dollars time to get for in eight services, almost a hundred dollars to turn the lights on. And that's cheap. To turn the electric on. But I'm just saying, just to come in the building, it costs us a hundred dollars for electric. I mean, I'm just using that as an example. If this is God's house and people's bringing their tithes and their offerings in and we're using that money to pay for electricity, then we ought to be here to use it. Amen. 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 If the grass needs cut and we pay somebody to cut the grass or we pay somebody to clean the grass, all that is your benefit. That's for you. Amen. What if somebody, if you invite somebody to come over for supper? And you cook a big dinner. Uh, Johnny ever felt like this? Cook a big dinner. And they don't show up. Mm -hmm. Or they show up, just one or two of them show up. Mm -hmm. How about that? 
That's the way I feel sometimes. When I feel like the Lord really gave me something for the church, mm -hmm. and I look around, there's a lot of people not here. And I'm not singling anybody out. I'm just I'm using this as an example. I've seen these things. Sometimes our mind, we need to get our mind on what's going on right. in the house of God. <laughs> Look around and see what's going on when you come. See who's here. I know some say, I don't like to look back. I don't like to look around. Look around and see who's here. Maybe you can go back and greet somebody and make them feel good. Amen? Amen. Y'all love me tonight. Amen. Hope I ain't been too hard on you. Amen. But I'm just saying, you think, you just think about that. All uh, there's there's times that people come to church and they'll ask for somebody. Yeah. Remember, Brother Johnny's watched the door a lot. People will come and they'll ask for somebody, and it would be somebody that goes to church that's not there that night, but they invited that person to come to church. Mm -hmm. But when they come, they wasn't there. I've seen people get, pray for their, get up and say, pray for my children. And when their children would show up, they wouldn't be in church. I mean, there's all these things. Now, don't get me wrong. I know there's reasons when you can't come to church. I mean, we're wise. You know, we know when we... I, there were times I had to work. There's been times I've been sick. There are times that I haven't been able to come. But you know what? The Lord knows why I wasn't here. That's right. And he knows, he knows that. But we ought to do everything we can. If I'm if I'm too sick to go to church, y'all love me. Amen. If I'm too sick to go to church, I'm too sick to go shopping. Yeah. Amen. 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 There's a lot of things that we that we could need to think about here, and I know I've kept you guys a long time. Amen. Anybody?